All right, in this video, we are going to add our features onto our mask base. So I, I rolled them up, crumbled up my newspaper, did the masking tape and saran wrap. I draped my clay over, I evened out my shape on the ends, and I tried to smooth it out as possible. And then I you know, was putting my clay on. Um, so make sure that your mask is even. If it's crooked and lopsided now, it's gonna be crooked and lopsided when we're finished. So make sure that your uh, mask looks pretty solid, uh, the base looks pretty solid, so that the rest of it stays solid as well. If you're going to make um, a uh, feature on this that is three-dimensional, uh, which we are going to do, you're not doing anything two-dimensional until we get all the three-dimensional stuff put on, but you wanna make this as three dimensional as possible. So when I say make eyes, nose, mouth, and ears, you're not going to just draw in the features and say, oh, I'm done. Not gonna happen. You're building these things up three dimensionally. So um, in order to make like a snout or raised front of the face, what you can do is um, use their good old trusty pinch pots, okay? So you're gonna build everything either with pinch pots, um, slabs, or coils, and then mold things and shape things to go on to the base. Now remember, anything larger than a golf ball needs to be hollow. So if I'm adding a snout onto my base, it has to be hollow. Quickest way to do that is to make a pinch pot. Okay, so I made a pinch pot. Here we go, here's my pinch pot. It's a little bumpy, but that's okay. We'll smooth it as we put it on. And I flared out my edges because I'm going to blend it into the face. So I want it to be somewhat flared. I'm going to score my base where I want to put my snout. And I'm going to score around the edges of my snout. Okay, so scored here, scored here, a little bit of water. And then I'm going to take my snout and plop it right down onto my uh, head form. And then I'm going to blend. Blend, blend, blend. Make sure you, it looks even also. By flaring out the edges, I'm able to blend it into the face or into the base more. So that without struggling as much. And get it as nice and even as possible. So let's see, I'm gonna smush this a little. Shape it around a little. Okay. So you're getting all your large features on first. And I highly recommend you always start with like the nose mouth area because that will help you decide how big to make the eyes and the ears and everything else. Um, if you're doing a snout, it's a nose mouth combo. Same with a beak. Um, I'll show you how to do a beak also. So if you want to make um, lips for this, another thing too, so you can draw in where you want to put the face, or I mean at the lips. Okay, and I like to use the tool that is the loop tool. I love this one for, where are we here? Here we go. This tool, the loopy tool, or this one with the hook on the end. There you go, so you can see that. Okay, that one hooks really nice and scoops out. And the difference between that and the needle tool, the needle tool just makes like a line. These actually kind of scoop out the area. And the other thing too, when you're doing lips, you wanna roll out a coil. I always do lip coils um, for my lips to define my lips and make them look larger. Okay. So I do an upper and a lower lip. And the trick about doing lips is for the bottom lip, you score the, you blend the clay down. And for the upper lip, you blend the clay up. score this. I'm going to score around where I carved that mouth. I'm going to score my coils. Always score and slip. I'm telling you things are going to fall right off. I had a couple of projects. Some of the stuff on those canisters were popping off because you guys didn't score and slip. All right, so my bottom lip and then my top lip goes above. It looks a little silly right now, but the key is blending it in. So I'm going to blend my upper lip up and my bottom lip down. So it kind of creates this more defined mouth area. Okay, and my bottom lip is gonna be 
London town. He's a little happy, isn't he? <laughs> And then I can go back through here and maybe like scoop out a little bit more and make it like a little bit more defined. Or if you really want to, you can cut it open because this is hollow. Let me cut this open. And then if you just squeeze it a little bit, you can pull it open and you can have an open mouth. Now, if you do it this too, so you might need to have to cut a little bit of this excess clay out if you want an open mouth, depending on how open you want it too. Let's see, scoop up as much as I can. You know, if you lose something inside and it goes into a hollow area and you can't get it out, don't worry about it. We can always get it out later or just leave it in there not going to cause any harm. Okay, and there we go. And then I can have an open mouth also. If you want to do something where you're adding teeth, I would put the teeth on first and then the lips. Because if you think about like your mouth or other people's animals in the mouth, the teeth are underneath the lips. So always put the teeth on first and then the lips. Okay, there's a trick to that as well. And then... One other thing that you can do if you want to make a beak. Now a beak is a mouth, and then usually there's um, holes for the nostril. So another way to do this, I'm gonna cut this off for a second. There we go, cut this off. Yeah, okay, so if I wanted to do a beak, let me smooth this out. I could use uh, some of my leftover slabs and make a beak. So however I want that beak to look, whether it's pointy or long or short, usually the lower part of the beak is much shorter than the upper part of the beak. You know, and then however you wanna build a bird beak, I would probably make it bigger on this face because the head is much larger. But there, there's your beak, you know, blend it out like this, flare it like we did the other one. This I didn't score and slip on. And then you can make a beak that lines up and then blends together in the corners, okay? So that, that would be a decent beak. I just would make this one much larger because my head shape is pretty big. One other thing we can talk about, here I'll put this on here so it doesn't look like he had really bad surgery. There we go. Um, <laughs> is the eyes. Um, if I'm doing this, I'm probably gonna put a nose on the tip of his mouth. Uh, on the tip of the snout so it's just a matter I've rolled a ball and I'm just kind of shaping a nostril or a nose with nostrils and then I'll squish it a little so if it's flat I have a flat area to score and slip on trim this up a little on the back I don't think I need as much of that clay there we go. And then I can score and slip the nose on. So there's kind of my animal look. Um, eyes, if I'm putting eyes on, you can put as many eyes as you like. Um, the same thing with the eyes as it is the mouth and the teeth. Your eyeball is inside your head and your lids are on top. So what I do as a rule of thumb with eyes are I make a ball shape for the eyeball. We know eyeballs are round but you only see about an eighth of your eyeball. You don't see your whole eye. So I cut it in half. And then I break it apart and I use those as the eyes. Um, another thing, I'll, I will sometimes make a socket a little bit before I put the eye in. And that's kind of pre-forming and pre-mapping the structure. All I did was take my thumbs and roll in an eye socket. Okay, and then I'm gonna put my eyeball in. Now I can flatten this out even a little bit more. I'll flare out the edges, because you're not gonna see this part. You're only gonna see a tiny bit of this eyeball. Okay, there we go. Let's see what this one. I'm gonna pinch it.
push it out a little bit so it blends on a little bit easier and so I don't get like any air pocket areas because that will make it blow up too. Score the eye, score the air, eye socket, add some water and blend it in. And then the trick too is to make sure that you do these almost simultaneously because when you put the eyelids on it can shape it a little different so make sure that you're make I would put the eyeballs on at the same time so that I made sure that they were even and the same size too that's the other um, theory behind this technique okay and then I can shape them a little bit and play with it and it looks pretty good I don't know about you so what I want to do is add lids to them um, now, different animals have different types of eyelids, depending on what they look like. But generally, the, the lower lid's a little bit thinner, and then the upper lid has more coverage. So with the upper lid, you can either use a, a bigger coil, or you can use a slab. I can cut part of this slab up, and use this to pinch and blend onto this area. Okay, and always do the bottom lid first because the upper lid always overlaps a little bit and you're gonna blend that on. So same with this side, smaller coil for the bottom lid. It should like nestle in right at that base of the eye. And then the top lid should bend and shape over. So see how I'm making one, there we go, we gotta play with it, make sure they line up and that they look even when I go to blend them on. So then we'll score and slip these on and blend again, just like the lip, you blend the upper lid up and the lower lid down. Do not blend your lid to your eyeball. Okay, that's a recipe for disaster. Then it just looks like a bumpy lump on your forehead or your eye. Um, if you want to do one big eye in the middle and make one half ball in the middle and two big lids and there's your eye um, if you want to make um, multiple eyes you can make another eye here it doesn't have to be just two eyes okay um, it doesn't have to be this type of eye you can do um, a big round eye if you want something kind of more bug-eyed take a ball score and slip it on and then just do like a lid around it let me see i'm gonna use this big piece score and slip this around the outside of it just to show you and blend it out like this okay if you want a really bug-eyed round eye sticking out you can do something like that as well depends on what creature you're creating so you don't have to make exactly how I just showed you I'm just giving you suggestions of how to go about making certain looks with your monster once you get all your main features on, your mouth, your nose, your eyes, and your ears, however you decide to do that, then you can start going at and, and, and adding texture and detail, like wrinkles and horns and scars or, or, I don't know, flowers growing out of it or however you're making this look, you can add that on. Get your main features on first. They're biggest parts of your, of your face. And then we'll work on getting more detail and texture. And I'll follow up with a video all about texture. Okay? Well, first you got to get your features on. And then you can worry about texture. And I'll add it details as well. Okay? Alright. Let me know if you have any questions. I hope you enjoyed this video.